But I, fortunately, I'm now an academic. I retired <clears throat> from the insurance industry a number of years ago, and now I teach at a university, so I can be here uh, both an objective and, in some cases, subjective uh, observer of your circumstances rather than uh, defendant of uh, your adversary. So when I uh, was first asked to do this, I thought it would be a useful thing for me to try to have the experience that you folks have who are seeking care for yourselves or care for others. And having been on the insurance industry side, I ran a health insurance company for a number of years. Uh, having been on that side, from our point of view, everything's fine because we set it up to work the way we want it set up. So I thought I would try it from your point of view. And so I thought, well, why don't I call a few insurers and ask some questions? And so the question I thought would be a good one to ask is this. What are your protocols to determine what treatments are covered for MG and when is each to be used? I thought that was a fair question. You're chuckling already. I see you've had that experience. Well, the answer I got was more questions. Uh, the first question always was something along the lines of, who are you and why are you asking these questions? Um, when I answered that, then the next question was, well, what's your member number? Because they really only want to talk to insureds and not to anybody else. And then after that, I, was, I call, did call my insurer and a number of others. Then they wanted to know what my name was, my telephone number, my address, my, and a note from my mother that I was entitled to that information. My personal favorite question was, Maya what? And then when I told them, Maya Senior Gravis, the person on the other end of the line, and I won't tell you what insurance company that was, the person on the other end of the line said, could you spell that for me? And then ultimately I got to uh, something along the lines of, well, I'm in, and then they would describe whatever department they were working for for the insurance company, and then would say, I think that, and then they would name another department of the insurance company, can answer your question, and I got transferred. The typical amount of time that I was on the phone uh, trying to get some information to my, what I thought was a fairly simple question, was a little over a half an hour uh, waiting to get answers. Now, after spending quite a bit of time, I ultimately, because I have a lawyer's patience for finding what I want, I usually got to somebody who could give me some information. Uh, one carrier, again, who I won't identify, got me to a place on their website which actually included some really cool information uh, with medical references to when, and in this particular case, immune globulin therapy was considered medically necessary and appropriate as a treatment for myasthenia gravis. And uh, if you can get there, there's a lot of really good information as to their medical science that this insurance company uses as to when they will uh, approve which kinds of therapy for what status of the various uh, status types for myasthenia gravis. However, there ain't no way to get there. <laughs> You're chuckling because you've had that experience. Uh, after I finally got to the spot, I said to myself, okay, now if I didn't know where this spot was, where all these documents were, it was li literally, probably 10 or 15 re references to 10 or 15 different medical studies and descriptions of various kinds of treatment and what they were approved for and what they were not approved for. It's really, really good information, right? That's something you'd like to have. There is no way in the world that any human being sitting in their office or home in front of their computer would say, well, here's what I ought to do to find that. It's findable, but you have to make some guesses that are not uh, intuitive. So at any rate, several insurance companies did have that, uh, and uh, you can get it, but it requires uh, I, either a connection with God or patience to get to somebody who will, will tell you how to get there. Now, what are the problems that you face? And I, I'm going to tell you this as an insurance guy, uh, not a patient or caregiver person. The problem you have, and you know this, is that treatments for MG are very, very expensive. The costs are high. So from your point of view, that's a sad thing, but you still need the treatment. 
From the insurance company's point of view, the problem is that the insurance industry can't, or an insurance company, can't charge you enough to cover your treatment. It, nobody could afford it. It's like being uh, 99 years of age and wanting a million dollars worth of uh, life insurance. The odds of you dying that year, pretty high. So what do you think it's going to cost you for a million dollars of insurance if you're 99 years of age? Pretty close to a million bucks, right? <laughs> kind of hard to buy that. There's not a lot of market for it, so they don't issue those policies. That's the problem you guys got. Uh, your, expense, your treatment is incredibly expensive, and we're all about transfer of risk. We take pools of people, and we say, uh, one thing might happen to you, and so here's what it's going to cost. We calculate a premium. Well, the problem is, for your kinds of conditions, there are not very many of you. That's happy in some sense. But from the insurance point of view, that makes you expensive folks. So it's a plus and a minus that there are not a lot of you and that the severity is in, what's what we call in the insurance industry, how much is it going to cost you? That severity, frequency is how often it's going to happen. Well, you got low frequency, meaning not a lot of you, and very high severity. And so we have a hard time figuring out how to charge you. Another thing that occurred to me as I was doing this research is you haven't got a famous face. Um, I recall uh, years and years ago, and I, there, I see a few out here as old as I am, may recall Aristotle Onassis? Yeah, he had myasthenia. That's when I first heard about it. And all of what I heard is he had droopy eyes. That's all we knew, right? Well, you guys need a famous face. You need somebody who's really sympathetic to be the face of MG. And so people who have the power to help you look at that face and say, I want to help that face. So find that face. All right, uh, what's the solutions? I'm about out of time here. Well, as I said, when I started, I'm a lawyer. So I got to tell you a lawyer joke, which I think is applicable. A bunch of guys are walking across a um, parking lot of a shopping center. And as they walk across, floating across them in the sky is one of these inflatable balloons, the thing that they heat up with the hot air and whatnot. And there are two guys in the balloon. The balloon floats over the parking lot. And uh, the two guys in the balloon look down, see some guys walking on the parking lot, and they say, where are we? And the um, guys on the ground look back up at him and said, oh, well, I guess you're about 200 feet in the air over a parking lot. <laughs> guy in the balloon turns to his friend and says, that guy's a lawyer. <laughs> How do you know? Well, what he told us is 100% true and totally useless. <laughs> Other guy said he can't be a lawyer. Why is that? Because he didn't charge anything. <laughs> so uh, to every uh, lawyer, uh, uh, problems look the same. My wife and I are studying French. We're trying to learn French good enough so we can go spend some time in France and not get treated rudely. <laughs> Those of you who have been to France know what I mean. Um, so anyway, the French word for lawyer is avocat, which means advocate. That's what you guys need is an advocate. For me, that's, in this case, it's medical advocacy. You need people like this association who are grabbing the providers and the insurance companies by the throat and demanding the care that you need. As a lawyer, I look at things and I, I like aggressive advocacy. Sometimes people call that lawsuits. You need aggressive pursuit of legal recognition for the treatments that you want. You're doing great, I think, in the medical research side. That's good, because you want to have doctors to say that this care, this thing that you need, is what you should get. Well, insurance companies, go back to the insurance principles that I talked about earlier, insurance companies are resistant to that, not because we don't like you, no, excuse me, not because they don't like you, I love you all, it's, it's because you're expensive, and an insurance company is nothing more than a money bucket. Money comes in from premiums, it sits there, it grows, and it goes out to pay expenses. And if an expense is a very expensive expense, then it's not a happily insurable expense. So do that research, get the right cures and, and treatments, 
But once you get those, then get somebody who's willing to charge the barricades and get those to be the recognized treatments across the industry. And then finally, uh, to, to finish up on the point of advoca advocacy, money is the mother's milk of getting anything done, whether it's politics or it's research or it's advocacy. I notice you're running a, a marathon or something out here to raise money for that. I encourage you to do that sort of thing. Have somebody create buckets of your own money that will allow you to become a force that will help the MGFA be an entity that can be your representative because each one of you individually can't do it. It's through the strength of associations like this that you can accomplish what you want. Thank you.